Writing SQL by hand is already quite good, but when the queries get a bit more complex, then it quickly becomes really time consuming. And that's where these LLMs really come in. Therefore, in this video, we're going to have a look at an open source tool called Chat2DB and how it might affect and change how you actually interact with your database. By the way, this video is sponsored by Chat2DB, so thank you so much for the support and thank you so much for the access to the pro version of this cool software. So let's just quickly talk about what even is Chat2DB and what is the purpose of this open source software. So Chat2DB is a tool that lets you use natural language to really interact with your database. It lets you generate reports, improve the efficiency of your SQL operations, and it has so much more functionalities. I personally think that the best thing is that it is open source and has a free community version. Obviously, the community version is quite limited compared to the other versions like the pro version for instance but still it's quite good and the big plus is here that they take data privacy seriously because they never really use your real data they only use the schema which is pretty good in my opinion so let's just get straight into the tool here okay what you see right here is just the ui of chat2db and the first step is obviously to connect to the database and if we now click on the create database button here and then press new connection to establish a new connection to a database they offer are quite a few databases that you can actually connect to like MongoDB, Redis, Snowflake or just simple MySQL databases. And we are going to connect to a locally running database. I just set up in a Docker Compose file, so in a Docker container basically. And what we can say is just let's just use name and then localhost. For that you can actually say release or the test environment depending on your use case. So if you want to connect to a release database, you can obviously say release. It doesn't really matter in this case. So we'll just say test. Then you can actually specify where the connection information here will be stored. You can say cloud if you want to really cooperate with your colleagues for instance. But for now we will just use local and then we will connect to the locally running database which is available on the localhost, the port is default. Then we have user password in this case I do think that it is Postgres and the password is test, if I'm not mistaken. Then obviously you can install a driver, you can do some SSH configuration if needed, and then we basically can test the connection here. Test connection is successful and then we're going to save and connect to the database. So let's just create a few tables here so that we can actually make use of the full power of Chat2DB. Now there are a few ways to actually create these tables. I'm just going to use a console here this will basically pop up a simple kind of code editor that just lets me kind of execute SQL queries and it can also invoke the AI here so that the tables are actually created for me. So let's just imagine that we have an IoT use case here. So let's just create three tables here. And what we're going to do is just press slash. So the cool thing here is that you can actually select the LLM model. So you can say, for instance, I want to use DeepSeek, which is pretty powerful and pretty good, which is also open source. Or you can say, I want to use Claude, for instance. So let's just use Claude 3.7. Now here, obviously, I think it's worth mentioning that the better the prompt is, the more precise the LLM output will be, and therefore also the better the table creation, for instance, will be. But I will just use a pretty ambiguous prompt with no real foreign or primary key description or really precise data types. I just want to have three basic tables. And what we have here is just a locations table with an ID and name, a sensors tables, and sensor readings table. Now I have a few relations between these three tables. So let's just check it out if this LLM can actually understand these connections and these relationships. So if you press the send button, it will actually generate the tables for me. It's also worth mentioning that it will not directly create these tables. It will only generate these three table queries here that we can then execute. Now I think it's quite clear that you can also use like a UUID instead of an incremental integer here, but it always depends on the use case and the requirements. And clearly you can always ask the AI to basically change it for you directly in here or even in the chat panel itself, which we are going to look at in a minute. Now what you could also do if we just highlight all of these, we can press this small SQL optimize button and it will actually try to kind of provide SQL optimization techniques to really leverage the full potential of your SQL database. Now this can include, for instance, if we see it here, indices for instance to really efficiently query your data of the tables. Now what is really cool if we just execute this 
it will actually create these three tables we can see it right here and you can also see directly an er model which is just the entity relationship model to see really the relations between the individual tables all right now how can we actually fill in some data and there are actually two ways the first one is just to generate test data now we can do this by just clicking on locations with a right click and then we can say here generate test data so this generate test data just generates the test data basically for this table specifically however i do want to have a small script that just runs indefinitely and just fills in the tables with just random data. And we can actually do this by just generating a script in the chat panel directly itself. So what we can do here is just basically open a new chat with our LLM. And what the cool thing here is, is that we can also highlight the individual tables with an add symbol. So we can say add sensors and then it will mention or will reference the schema from the sensors table. Now I'm just going to let the LLM pretty much just generate a simple Golang simulation script. Now I do not really recommend just copying the script and trusting it, right? Always make sure that it does the correct thing. Now obviously this is just for testing purposes, so I'm not really going into depth into the script itself. But what we can do is just copy the script and then we can execute it. Okay, and what we'll actually see is that the tables are populated correctly. So the locations, sensors and sensor readings. And if we refresh the table, basically it will update the table entries, right? So we now have 160 entries in this table. But there's even more with Chat2DB because we can directly analyze this data in Chat2DB. So what we can actually do is just generate some shards directly in Chat2DB, which is pretty cool. And we can actually do this with a really simple prompt. So what is really cool here is that we do not really need to add any kind of table reference. The LLM can figure that out as well. So we will enter this prompt and what the AI will do, it will just generate the code, the SQL code. It will then execute this SQL query and then it will just generate a pretty simple shard. Now that's pretty cool. It's, it's equally distributed among the different kind of locations. And what we can now do is really customize this shard as well using this three dot menu here. Then we press setting shard and then we can adapt it based on our preferences like the theme color. We can even enable the access, the legend data label and you name it. So you can do a lot of customization with these charts in the tool itself. But that is not all. What we can do here is also pin this shard. Now this enables to basically select a dashboard. So we can create a dashboard here. So let's just say this is a really simple sensor dashboard or something like this. Then we press create and then a dashboard is created. We need to select it and then we press OK. And then we have a simple dashboard where this shard is now added to this dashboard. So what you can see in the dashboard tab here in the sidebar, we can actually see the dashboard and then we can see this really simple shot here. And what's pretty cool about this dashboard functionality is that you can obviously manually refresh the data here, but you can also have like a real time functionality. So what we can do is say refresh rule and then we say refresh by minute and we want a every single minute refresh. Then we press confirm and now every single minute this dashboard will get a fresh refresh. But obviously I can do more with this dashboard. I can just move this around for instance in different positions and locations and I obviously can add more shots here. So let's just do this by having a simple temperature over time for a specific sensor and we are not going to specify which sensor here. So if we just input this prompt here the AI will actually generate this shot for us and obviously the SQL query as well. And we now have a beautiful shot here that is a bit more complex. Obviously, it's not really pretty with the time here, but you can customize this on your own. And we will pin this, and then we say sensor dashboard, click OK, and then it's basically in here. And we will drag this like this. What we can also do is, for instance, drag this down here and even make this a bit bigger so we can actually see more data or see more details of this data. And that's about it. I think it's pretty useful and pretty cool if you just want to get some insights into the data 
of your database. Now, obviously it's also good for reporting if you need to do that. I've just wanted to mention this pretty helpful tool when it comes to data analysis. So if you really want to use some kind of text to SQL to enhance your query generation, just consider trying it out. It's free initially, but obviously you can upgrade if you really want to. And if you also want to maybe have a quick crash course about Golang, feel free to check out this video as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and bye-bye.